today is Tuesday, December 3rd, it's 5.30 p.m., so I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'm going to introduce the Board of Education. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
even though that's um, not mandatory, that's just a recommendation. But again, we wanted to make this worthwhile and a really um, great process so that we can really focus in on what's working and what's maybe uh, not working as well. So we have representation across all grade levels. We have representation from intervention specialists, gifted uh, intervention specialists. Uh, we had all of the buildings represented, including high tech. Uh, and then we had administrators from across the district as well. So a really comprehensive team. And we worked really hard for three days. So the first day, we looked at the overview of literacy. We looked at data and research. We looked at what Ohio was doing about literacy. Um, we looked at our initiatives and we did initiative inventory to figure out what we have in place currently, what's working, what gaps we may have. Then we did a really deep dive into all of our data sources and then used all of that to come up with our action steps. So, just to kind of ground you in what Ohio is doing, Ohio now has a plan to raise literacy. And not a lot of people know about it, it's kind of a state secret, but it is amazing. So they've actually gone through a lot of the research that's available and put it together to create a comprehensive plan for Ohio. So we started by looking at this and really looking at all of the research that has gone into this so that we were making really great decisions grounded in research. We um, looked at a couple, of these are just a couple real quick slides that are from that plan. So this is one of them, this is called the Simple View of Reading. And this says that reading comprehension, which is where we often end, is really a product of word recognition, the phonics, phonemic awareness, and sight words, times language comprehension, which are all those other pieces of the listening comprehension, vocabulary, oral language, and background knowledge. And if any one of those pieces is missing, then there's going to be an issue with comprehension later. So again, this is something that is tied into Ohio's plan to raise literacy. We use this as a foundational research piece as we looked at all of our programs and our initiatives, and uh, we used it to propel us forward. This is another piece of um, data and research that we use. Uh, it says essentially the same information, but in this one, each of the strands, these little pieces here, are these little blocks down here. And again, they weave together to make a proficient reader at the end. So one of the things that we talked about in both of these um, pictorial graphics is that we know which students are not reading at grade level. But we don't always know why. We can't always pinpoint that individual strand that's missing. And so that's one of the reasons why that RTI process is so important. So we talked about that. That's going to help us figure out which strand is missing. And then the next piece is how do we fill in those gaps. So the last piece of research that we spent a long time looking at was the changing emphasis of big ideas. So again, we use this to figure out where we're really strong instructionally and where we may have gaps in our curriculum. So all of that was the foundation to then develop our literacy plan. So we went through a process similar to the reading achievement plan process which is not mandatory but recommended by the state. We look at um, our mission and vision, what we believe in. We did a really in-depth data analysis. We created goals and then action plans and then um, came up with the expectations and how we're going to implement those. So this is what we came up with as our literacy mission. The North Ridgeville City Schools is dedicated to fostering a love of reading in order to build a community of lifelong learners. Our learning community believes in the capability of all students to be proficient readers and writers. We believe our students should be given every opportunity possible to develop their reading, writing, and speaking and listening skills. We will encourage students to be active learners, provide students with a variety of literacy choices, implement evidence-based instructional strategies, personalize instruction for all readers, develop their critical thinking and problem-solving skills, and collaborate vertically across grade levels to ensure the continuity of materials and benefits. So that's, again, like the big picture of what we want to do. We looked at a lot of different data sources, really in depth, and then from these, uh, each grade band came up with goals. And what's really nice about this, as you look through these goals, you'll see this is supporting a lot of the work that we've already started. 
So there is a connection to the RTI process. There's a connection to the phonics and the phonemic awareness pieces that we're seeing in preschool and in kindergarten. So we're really just um, <coughs> realized through this process that some of the needs that we had identified really were needs. From there, we came up with our plan of action and how we're going to ensure that these pieces are being met. And these are the highlights. So you can feel free to read through all of that information there. But if you want a quick summary, here's what we came up with. In grade stage two, we have a really great program for word study. But we were missing that explicit phonics instruction. So we started with the Lucy Hawkins last year. We pushed really hard this year in kindergarten. It's being used in all kindergarten classes. And we're now moving that up into first and second grade. So that was definitely a need that came through this process. Uh, so we'll be expanding that pilot in first and second grade to 16 additional classrooms. So very excited. In pre-K through two, we do not have materials to support chronological awareness. So PK right now is um, piloting the integrity curriculum. And we have talked about expanding that up once, that, um, once we have some more data to show that that's working. For grades K to four, we're looking at the Ames Web Plus, so that's where the RTI process comes in as an additional monitoring and intervention tool to ensure the success for all students. And again, drill down to those individual strands in the rope to figure out what is missing. In grades three to eight, we realized we have a lot of the resources, but what's maybe missing is that consistency. So we need to strengthen our use of collaborative time, whether it's um, the TBT or PLC, the teacher-based te uh, te uh, teacher teams and personal <laughs> learning communities, professional learning communities. Um, so those times that they have in place currently, we need to do a better job talking about best practices and looking at resources and figuring out what's working and sharing. Um, and then we also need to do a better job making sure that there's consistency across all classrooms, that teachers are using things with fidelity and they're using the same tools. Uh, we also talked about providing additional professional development, looking at explicit vocabulary instruction, informational text, and writing instruction. And again, those three pieces came out of the data that we looked at, um, specifically the uh, Ohio test data. And then we also talked about using ODE resources better. So there's a lot of resources out for ODE that we can start to use to drill down in grades three through eight and figure out specific areas where students are doing really well and specific, specific areas where we maybe need to enhance our instructional practices. So um, we talked about doing some professional development in those areas and using the team time again to strengthen that. And then all grades will focus on refining collaborative teacher time to better analyze data. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what we looked at. So from here, this plan is going to be shared with administrators, um, integrated into the work that's already occurring in each building, and that's already starting to happen. Some of these pieces are already in place. And the literacy team is going to reconvene in the spring to discuss implementation and then what our next steps will be. So there's a lot here in the plan that we want to attack, but we also realize that we have to attack things slowly. We can't fix everything, you know, between now and spring. So we need to be very strategic so that we're doing things very well and making an impact to student achievement. So that's, in a nutshell, what you have in front of you. What questions do you have? So I'm looking right into your literacy plan, mm -hmm. multiple years to fully implement. Mm -hmm. What is that mean these kids mean while they're moving through the process? So Green comprehension is going to become more and more difficult as they progress into the new grade level. Right. So multiple years concerns me. If you're already recognizing that there's an issue, okay, we've done a phenomenal job of catching up third graders. Mm -hmm. Why do we keep having so many third graders that we have to catch up? And how long does that part of the literacy plan change of the stack component right. as a starting point. So it's actually twofold. So the first thing that we're doing is we're improving our instructional practices starting in preschool and moving all the way up. So that will start to um, make sure that our, all of our students are really receiving that rich instruction across the board. 
Um, but then at the same time, we also know that there's some gaps. So that's where that arch back process is going to come in. So if they get to third grade and they miss something from kindergarten or from first grade, we're going to start to catch those kids and provide the interventions that they need so that they can get back to grade level. And then what side of this or the state's plan, if 43% of our parents cannot read and comprehend, I'll lay eyes on it, there's early studies out there showing that our weakest performers are growing up in those households. And how do we address that? And I know as a school district, we can't take responsibility for adults, but parents aren't reading their kids at home and the kids are struggling. I'll lay eyes on it, there's a direct correlation between those students and those parents. Does the state have anything as part of this literacy plan, or are we just attacking it with kids? And so, you know, that's a tricky one because there probably is um, a correlation for a lot of students, but we can only fix what we can fix. So we're going to focus really hard on the pieces that we can make a difference for, and um, you know, wherever our kids are coming to us, we need to take them from there and grow them. So, so there's something at the state level that you're aware of either as part of this literature? There, there's some verbiage in their plan to start at birth, but there's not a whole lot of action steps to really implement things starting at birth. You know, the, the biggest piece is to start screening better for preschool and top of our programs and things like that, but um, you know, there's there's a lot of tricky pieces with all of that too. Okay. Um, where it's not our responsibility, do you have a social worker now that's working with households? Mm -hmm. Is there opportunities there? I'm sure there's literacy programs in the right county and Iowa County. Is there possibly something that we can take a look at there? I think you know, they have on it that there's a joint correlation to that be in our lower income demographic mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, we can look at some of those options. We did it as part of this plan. We really focused on what we have, you know, for students in our buildings, what we can do to start to grow them. Um, so that's where we wanted to start because that's where I think we're going to get the biggest bang for a buck. But we can look at other options too. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Heather. Just to mention, um, if everyone can take a look at calendars, we do need to set a date for the organizational meeting in January. Uh, right now, that would kind of be scheduled for Tuesday, January 7th, for our organizational meeting, our tax budget meeting, and the special meeting for January. Just want to put that on everybody's radar and calendar at this time.
Anything else with that? Okay, well, that'll take us to communications report as we look at our policy report this evening. Um, we have two gifts in our Cruiser City Schools, and it's recommended Board of Education accept the following gifts at our next meeting. Um, multiple miscellaneous items, which include plywood paint hinges and paint brushes, estimated at $100, was donated by Gregory Bizup to the Ranger High Tech Academy to be used as needed. And a brand new fish tank, estimated value at $80, was donated by Sarah Andersey to the Ranger High Tech to be used as needed. Total donations received for the 2019-20 school year, $12,505. And as always, we thank our generous community for their contributions to our schools. That takes us to Human Resources Report. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Um, we have a number of items in the Human Resources Report. Two special project stipends, one hourly tutor, two supplemental contracts, one support staff substitute, two unpaid volunteers, one certified staff leave of absence, two support staff leaves of absence, one certified staff resignation, and one support staff resignation. This concludes the human resources report. Any questions about that? Um, I just have one question. But, um, study table, is that is that high school, middle school, or is that? This is actually the combination, the NRAC and the high school, it's the in between time before practices begin. Okay. Um, and we previously had approved him for a period of time. He thought he was going to have a coaching conflict, and that's now been continued because now his coaching practice time is scheduled. He's able to do the study table. Okay, thank you. Okay, that takes us um, to hearing the public on new items as there is no finance audit report this evening. If anyone would like to speak about an item that's not on the evening's agenda, now is your opportunity to do so. Seeing none. Um, just as a reminder to the board, um, before we adjourn, we have a meeting on December 11th at 5 p.m. Um, a couple things on that agenda. One will be the substitute issue to place on the ballot for March. Um, so, um, be here. <laughs> Any other announcements or anything from the board this evening? Seeing none, it is recommended the Board of Education adjourn the special meeting with no action to follow. Mm -hmm. Moved by Ms. Saxon, second by Ms. Baca. Is there any discussion? No call, please. Ms. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Baca? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes.